Well, one of the most impressive relationships India has with any nation in the world is with the United Arab Emirates. The Prime Minister was recently in the UAE taking forward that relationship. It is a strategic relationship, uh, but the possibilities seem fairly boundless, particularly if you look at the economic possibilities. We've got a wonderful guest with us, um, the Ambassador of the United Arab Emirates uh, to New Delhi. Thanks uh, very much for being with us. Uh, Dr. Alchari, let me begin by asking you a little bit about what everybody is talking about. Um, the Rupee Dhiram Trade Pact. In simple terms, what does it mean for people in my country and people in yours? It means you can settle trade in local currencies without having uh, to go through a third party or a third currency, which means uh, naturally lower cost for traders, exporters, importers, and which should by extension uh, expand trade over the coming years. And you've been very closely part of the process of setting this up. How long did it actually take uh, for both sides to agree and agree to implement this? Not long, actually. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but the SEPA was negotiated and signed uh, in less than three months. Uh, this was not in less than three months, but the technical conversation was going on for quite some time. And uh, as soon as they agreed on the technical details and that it is possible uh, to take place, they were ready to sign. Uh, let's look at this in the context of where overall trade is between both our countries. The target is $100 billion in trade. Um, how realistic is that and what is the time period or the window within which you see that happening? Well, I've been here for less than a year and the trade figure was updated from the time I came when it was uh, $44 billion US dollars in non-oil bilateral trade. Uh, the figure that was announced over the weekend was slightly higher than 50 billion US dollars in non-oil trade. So you can see that there is uh, quite an increase there uh, over the period of uh, a year or even somewhat less. The target is 100 billion US dollars by 2030 in non-oil trade. And as you can see, if this trajectory continues, that should be easily achievable. What are some of the key areas uh, that the United Arab Emirates and India are presently looking at going forward? Uh, small and medium enterprises, uh, MSMEs, entrepreneurs, uh, space cooperation, uh, food security, energy security. I've been visiting uh, states, uh, meeting entrepreneurs, seeing what are the opportunities available, what are the new technologies and innovations that Indian talent has to offer uh, for the UAE to be able to be part of and to collaborate on. Before we get to more specifics, just a broader question on how is there a sense of real excitement in the United Arab Emirates on what the diaspora brings now, the new, a new younger diaspora brings to the United Arab Emirates uh, the, and the new areas, and why you want to take this relationship with India forward? Let me start by saying that this relationship is historic, and the Indian diaspora the UAE have always been welcome. They will always be welcome. We acknowledge them and we appreciate them as part of the UAE's journey and where the UAE stands today. And I think this is something that I don't say it as a government official, but I say it also as something that the UAE people feel uh, and express towards the Indian diaspora. Moving forward, I can see that uh, all of those entrepreneurs, SMEs, MSMEs will find uh, ways to uh, cooperate with UAE companies, uh, to invest together, uh, to get into business partnerships, uh, and to find that the UAE can be a very good market not only to sell into but to export from the UAE elsewhere. There, there is a very strong uh, leadership to leadership association, Prime Minister Modi, with uh, you know the leadership in the United Arab Emirates, the royal family, um, and there's been such a wonderful personal connect. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? We're very fortunate to have uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and to have uh, Sri Prime Minister Modi and to see this uh, personal relationship that has been driving the momentum in this uh, relationship and in this partnership forward. Uh, you could see it uh, when, whenever they meet, uh, whenever there is some sort of a reception, a uh, short meeting, a few hours engagement, um, when they converse about uh, various topics. Um, the kind of energy that they bring to this relationship is exceptional and I have uh, no doubt and 100% confidence that this will continue to be the case. We're quite fortunate. It is fantastic. Now, linking the UAE and India payments and messaging systems, um, you know, that's the technical part of what we were talking about earlier on. But when it does 
fully work, how will it ensure the seamless transactions that people in both our countries want? Well, every system when first introduced will have its glitches. And so whenever this happens, the technical teams will need to meet and see how they can uh, smoothen the process. Uh, but again, the idea is that you don't go through a third party, which naturally means you do need to have some sort of communication between your two payment platforms. And this is what they have agreed on. We have a comprehensive strategic partnership, um, and that's evolved over a period of time. Where is that strategic partnership today? It's in its best shapes. Uh, yet, every single time uh, the two leaders meet, there are always new ideas of things that we can do together, uh, more investments that uh, we could uh, work on, whether in India or in the UAE. And it's great. Uh, I have come out of the meeting with at least uh, five, six items that I need to personally follow up on. And I don't doubt that this will always be the case. What are some of those areas? Give us a little bit of an insight. Well, one of the things is how can we make it easier for people to travel between the two countries? Uh, what is missing uh, in taking this forward? Uh, is it just about aviation? Uh, is it the visa scheme? Whatever that would make it easier for Indians to travel uh, to the UAE, we should be able to, uh, to do it and to work on it. Another thing is uh, a very specific project in a very specific state, which I obviously cannot disclose here, uh, but you'll get to hear about uh, in the near future. But there was a personal interest uh, from the two leaders to make sure that not only this project, but any other project that both leaders and uh, both countries are interested in should be focused on and uh, moved ahead. And Ambassador, um, one of the common concerns which, which obviously the United Arab Emirates and India has is the concern on terrorism. India has repeatedly expressed at so many levels, including at the United Nations, the concern over financing of terror. Uh, where does the United Arab Emirates stand on the battle or the war against terrorism at all levels? Well, we have been partners of this for quite some time. We both suffered from it. And our position is that we need to combat, we need to counter terrorism, extremism, and the narrative surrounding it in whatever way or form, not just in terms of countering the financing of terrorism, but all forms and all shapes of it. And um, how do you see progress or cooperation as far as the fight against terror is concerned? How do you see that expanding? Do you see that expanding? It's ongoing and it will always be uh, something that we jointly work on and collaborate on. Clean energy is another area which the United Arab Emirates is focused on a great deal. Um, before we talk about the India Connect with clean energy, which obviously people in this country are very keen on, and the government certainly is, could you tell us about a lot of the steps that the UAE has taken in, uh, in clean energy and in green energy? Because, uh, you know, you've been uh, fairly part breaking in terms of what you've put on the ground. Despite the fact that we are a hydrocarbon producer and exporter, we have invested uh, 50 billion US dollars, more or less, in terms of uh, clean energy projects. We will continue to invest more, uh, another 50 billion US dollars in the future, not only in the UAE, but in other countries. We're also very committed uh, to India's uh, goals when it comes to clean energy and the best energy mix that fits India as a nation. Could you tell us a little bit uh, about you know, India's role this year, we are leading the G20 process. Uh, how important is it uh, for India to, to emerge as a voice of the global south? Um, and how important is the G20 process towards, you know, some of the goals which India and the UAE share? India is a strategic partner uh, and they are uh, an important partner in uh, the global south and an important voice in the global south. And we always count on India's uh, support and help in advancing uh, not only the UAE's agenda when it comes to COP28, but uh, the world's aspirations as well. Um, what I found really interesting is that there are Indian educational institutes also now coming up in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, that's interesting. Um, and what do you believe is the future of that? More educational offerings uh, to Indian diaspora and other populations coming from elsewhere who are keen on getting an Indian education or maybe a French education or an American or British education. Uh, what we are focused on in the UAE is to have those offerings in the different levels of uh, education out there and to make sure that we get the best institutes uh, in India and elsewhere to be able to deliver such uh, high class, world class education in the UAE. That's an interesting point, Ambassador, because so many from our country look to travel to the United Kingdom 
or to Australia or Canada or the US to get an education. What you are suggesting is that going forward, the UAE might be an equally viable destination. Is that right? Yes, and we're only three hours away. So it just makes it easier for family to visit, parents to visit, for uh, students to travel back and forth. Uh, and this is the kind of uh, thing that I was referring to earlier when I said we need this uh, ease of travel, we need this better connectivity for everyone because when you work on education projects or uh, medical tourism projects or any other kind of projects, you want to make sure that the uh, ecosystem around it is also supportive of its success. Yeah. Um, I, you know, this is something that interests me also, aviation. Now, the United Arab Emirates has a, a massive presence uh, in India, obviously. We now, of course, are seeing a restructured Air India. Uh, do you see that as being a lot of competition for both uh, Etihad and for Emirates going forward? The reason I ask is because Emirates still recently had more destinations out of India than even Air India did. They eventually would have the same. Uh, there are great uh, ambitious plans to expand uh, the uh, the points and the uh, travel schedules and the flights being made available by Air India, uh, not only to countries in the region, but also beyond. I don't see it as a competition. I see it as uh, airlines from both countries complementing uh, one another and seeing how they can find uh, future areas of cooperation. A final question. What was your big takeaway from this visit of Prime Minister Modi to the UAE? that yes we have done a lot we have achieved a lot but there's always uh, more to do there's always uh, there are always ways to make things uh, better and uh, both countries both leaders are extremely committed to that well there you have it uh, the ambassador of the united arab emirates uh, to new delhi telling us a little bit about that important state visit by Prime Minister Modi to the UAE. The UAE is a really important strategic partner of India in terms of our energy requirements, in terms of broader global geostrategic issues, clean energy, and of course the people-to-people -people link, which really is the bedrock of that relationship.